Luke 5, verses 1 through 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Genesaret, saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, 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 at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. And Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draft of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus saith unto Simon, Fear not from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now what we have here is a day, if you will, in the life of Simon Peter. But it is not like any other day. It is not just a day. It is the day. It is the day that everything in Simon Peter's life changed. It is the day when he meets the Lord on a personal level. It is such a day in his life. The Bible said that when they got the ship back to shore. He forsook all. Now Simon was a professional fisherman. He made a living. He had been on that lake all of his life. That little boat, that ship was all Simon had. It was all Simon knew. But he forsook all and followed Jesus. That day there was a desertion. He didn't just change, make a little change. But Simon Peter deserted everything that he had for Jesus. What Simon Peter done was he didn't make Jesus the most important thing in his life. I'm sick and tired and fed up my eyebrows of Christians struggling trying to get Jesus to be the most important thing in their life. I tell you what we need to get back to. We need to do what Simon and Peter did. He said, I'm not going to make Jesus the most important thing in my life. I'm going to make Jesus the only thing in my life. I'm just going to leave everything. I'm going to desert everything. And he got a new destination or he got a new path. He started to follow God. He started to follow him. I pray, oh God, help us to be willing not to just make Jesus most important, but make him all our life. Make him everything in our life. Make him the all only thing in our life. You say, what's so good about Jesus that we should do that? Well, I'm going to preach a few minutes on this thought. Jesus is really worth all that. Jesus is really worth all of that. In these verses we'll see first of all Jesus is worth you forsaking all. Jesus is worth you leaving everything. Jesus is worth you making him all of your life. Having nothing else, just him first of all because of how he enters our life. Look at it. The Bible said, I want to just point this out. He came to pass that they pressed on him. They were thronging him. That word is what I think about when I think about how they stick sardines in a can. I mean, they just mash them in there together. You could say they were thronging him. They were choking him. They were all over him. Why? They wanted some miracle from him. They had their hand out trying to get some kind of money. No, the Bible said they were doing that to him because they wanted to hear the word of God. Help us to get back to where the most important person, where the most important thing is to hear his word, to have him speak to us. Now, he enters Simon's life. Verse number three. They were gone out of their boats, their ships, uh, mending their nets. And the Bible said he entered into one of the ships.
ships. Now there was at least two of them there, the Bible said, but he didn't enter into both of them. He didn't enter into the other guys. What he does, he steps right into Simon Peter's life. Right in the middle of all Simon's got going on, Jesus steps in to his life. Simon doesn't have his mind on the Lord. Simon's over there washing and mending and working his business and he's getting his nets ready for the next day. I'm going to tell you sometimes when you come to church you might not be thinking about God. I remember when I went that morning I was lost on my way to hell. I didn't have my mind on God. I don't know what they sang. I don't know what the choir sang. I don't know what the special was. I don't know what the man of God preached. I know who the man of God was but I don't know a word he preached. But he is a still walking on pews hacking, stomping, snorting uh, and screaming his head off. Uh, all of a sudden God uh, stepped into my ship. Uh, and before that man of God ever got done preaching, I'd already, I didn't wait on the invitation. I didn't wait on 16 stanzas of just as I am. Uh, that man of God was still preaching. I stepped over legs, kicked pocketbooks out of the way uh, and made my way to an old fashioned altar. And I gave my life to Jesus because he's really worth all of that because in my sin when I was down when I was on my way to hell he just showed up he entered my life he just showed up watch this now he not only just shows up but he spoke up he tells Simon in verse 3 he prayed him thrust out a little from the land now watch what Jesus does Simon thrust out a little from the land Jesus is getting away from the crowd where he can minister to them and he sits down in the ship and he teaches that crowd that's standing on the shore I believe this is a picture of salvation Jesus shows up in your life and he speaks to you he says make that first step it ain't a big step he said thrust out a little from the land. Just take a little step. Oh, Simon Peter said, I'm going to take a step. I'm going to tell you when he come for me that morning. Did nobody have to lasso me. Nobody had to drag me. He said, just thrust out a little from the shore. And I thrust out a little from the shore. Maybe somebody here this morning and the Lord speaking to you. He just showed up in your life and said, take one step. I heard it all my life growing up. My mama raised me in church. I had drug disease. She drugged me every time the door was open. I I mean, I'd heard it. Them preachers say, if you take the first step, he'll close up the distance. If you'll just take one little step. All he told Simon Peter to do was launch out. uh, He told him to thrust out just a little from the shore. I believe it's a picture of salvation. The only problem is, I believe that most of us have never got past this thrusting out a little from the shore. We got in, uh, and he got in the boat with us. It's a picture of relationship. Jesus is in Simon Peter's life. Simon thrust out a little from the shore. But Jesus is not talking directly to Simon. He is teaching the ones that are standing on the shore. And I've run into Christians all the time, been saved for decades. And they say, I don't hear God speaking. I don't hear God move. See God moving. All you ever done, thrust out from the shore. He got you in. He's teaching others, trying to get them in. And, uh, and then he turns to Simon Peter. I think the launching, uh, thrusting out was a picture of redemption, resurrection, salvation. But I think what he says to him next is a picture of revival. He said, launch out into the deep and let your nets down. If you're going to live in that mature Christian life, if you go find out what being a Christian is all about, you're going to have to do a little more than thrust away from the shore. Folks stand up all the time. They remember thrusting a little from land. But have you ever launched out into the deep and let your net down? God's a calling somebody this week to launch out into the deep because we're going to find out if you'll get out there in the deep. Here's the call this morning, church. Will somebody get out of the kiddie pool? Will somebody take 
take the swimmies off. Will somebody quit waiting around in the shallow end and come on out here and get in over your head? Just launch out into the deep. If you want to be revived, you won't get revived just thrusting out a little from the shore. You're going to have to come out here and get in the deep waters. He said, launch out from the deep and let down your nets. Not only do you enter Simon's life, Jesus is worth all of that because he enriches Simon's life. Jesus said, I want you to launch out in the deep, let down your nets. Now I read it to you so I could paraphrase it now. I'm going to paraphrase it in the weaver's paraphrase of the King James Bible. Simon Peter said, Lord, I'm a professional fisherman. I've done this for a living since I was a little bitty boy. And we've already went out to that spot and I fished that spot all night long and took nothing. Didn't even get a bite. I'm going to tell you what happens when you launch out in that deep water. He said, nevertheless, because you said to do it. See, when you get out here in the deep water, what you'll find out is the word of the Lord is enough. You won't have to hear thunder and light, see lightning. You won't have to feel an earthquake. You won't have to feel a mighty rushing wind. All you'll need is a word from the Lord. When you're out there in the deep water, your life may be falling apart. Everything may be upside down. But all you need to know is I've got a word from the Lord. I've tried that before and it didn't work. I've been there before and it didn't work. But nevertheless, your word's good enough. If you say do it I'll just launch out right where you said uh, and I'll let the nets down because God not only can I'm glad God will he said let down your nets for a draft of fishes I'm going to show you more than you ever saw not only do you find that the uh, the word of the Lord's enough. His word's enough. But that's where you find out that you can trust him completely. Sure. Out there in the deep. See, as long as you stay here at the shore, you hear what's being said, but you ain't hearing it being said necessarily directly to you. But he turns directly to Simon Peter and he says, launch out in the deep. Ain't nobody else out there in the deep. It's just Jesus and Simon Peter. And he said, let down your nets for a draft. We're going to catch more fish than you've ever caught in your life. And Simon Peter said, well, your word's good enough and he launches out there in the deep sometimes I think we're on the verge of God sending revival and we launch out there in the deep and we don't let our net down or we launch out there in the deep and let our net down and we're murmuring well I done fished this all night I done tried this all before and none of this will ever work we better get back to understanding that his word is enough you can trust him completely not only in the deep will you find that his word's enough but out there in the deep when you launch out let me show you how he enriches his life you'll find out that his wonders will exceed your expectations let me read it again from the Bible. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, didn't happen before. Fish didn't start jumping in the boat. As far as Simon knows, I'm sitting on this dead hole that hasn't worked, and I tried it all night. Some of you probably might have prayed all night and said it didn't work. And Jesus said, well, go pray again. Well, I prayed all night. But if you say pray again, I think I'll just pray again because until Simon Peter believingly let down the net, nothing happened. But as soon as he let down the net, the Bible said when he had done, when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, so many that the nets break. He had more. You won't talk about getting more than you know what to do with. Launch out here in the deep. God give you more than you know what to do with. You say, well, I'm just barely getting by. You must just be thrust out a little from the shore. You get out here in the deep and you'll watch the wonders of God excel your 
your biggest imagination, your hopes and your dreams. When all this pandemic hit, my wife and I, I was bragging to her. I said, man, I'm going to have a real evangelistic year. I'm booked from the last uh, weekend of December all the way to the last week of May. I've got every week full. I'm going to be a real-time evangelist. They're still calling me. They're still calling me and canceling meetings. I'm not even picking up the summer meetings now. They've called me and one called me this two days or so ago and I didn't bit more get off the phone. I talked to a fella that came by the house. I walked back in the house. The phone was ringing. There's another fella wanting to book me. I didn't even really know him. He just had heard me on CD and somebody out of church had recommended me. So I want you to come and preach a meeting for us. I'm telling you, God's been good to this old boy. I won't go into any detail, but I'll say this. I ain't no bill collector trying to find me. You can look at me and tell I ain't missed no meals. I, I didn't have to bum a pawn anything to get gas money to come up here to this meeting. God knows how to take care of you. You say, why? Because three years ago when I left my pastor, I launched out in the deep and said, I'm just going to follow your word. Uh, anywhere you say, let down the net, I'm going to let down the net. Uh, I'm going to just do. And he had so many fish that the net started to break. Well, it got so much for Simon Peter. Watch this. He couldn't take it. He started beckoning for his partners. When's it got so much for you? You started to call somebody else in. Let me give you an example. Please forgive my uh, the way I say it. It might not be all that spiritual, but God got to kicking around up here, and it got to running over, and it got so good at uh, Pastor Foster's house and in Pastor Foster's life. You know what he did? Uh, he picked up the phone and started beckoning us other guys. Come in here and get some of these fishes. There's so many fishes in this net. Y'all come get some of this. I'm telling you, when you get out there in the deep part and you start seeing what God's a doing, He starts enriching your life. You don't try to hoard it up. You put their names in an envelope and start praying that they'll come and get in on it. You start sharing it with others. You start telling everybody else, I can't tell there's a pandemic. I can't tell I've lost a meeting. God has shown me wonders and been so good to me beyond anything I ever thought. And now I'm asking you, come on out here in the deep waters. Help me with all this God's doing. It's breaking my net. The Bible said that James and John, who were partners in the fishing business, they get out there and they start loading all them fish into the boat. And you know what happens? The boat's plural. Not just Simon's. But James and John's boat start sinking. When's the last time God poured it out on you so much? The boat started sinking. You had to say, wait a minute, Lord. I can't do nothing with all this. I'm going to have to call somebody to come help me. And they come and get I'm going to give you an example. I preach a meeting for, uh, an account meeting for a pastor in Roanoke, Virginia named David McNeil. I was up there in his camp meeting. I was one of the main speakers that night. And uh, places packed. I mean, I had drew a big crowd in for them to hear Dr. Kenny Baldwin. <laughs> really, the truth of the matter was, I was the warm-up guy for Dr. Baldwin. Now, that place is packed. It was so packed, they have two overflow rooms. My wife and I and family were sitting in the next to the last seat in the overflow room. And I don't remember exactly what somebody was singing. I think somebody was singing. And then that, they have three set of pews. Pastor McNeil was sitting on the corner on the front pew. It got real to him. He jumped up and he ran across this other corner and he sat down. Well, I stood up and looked and said, what in the world is going on up there? I mean, it was getting good. I mean, it got better. It got better. God got to moving around in that service so much. I mean, it got, listen, it got slapped humanly speaking it got slapped crazy I mean we could, I couldn't explain what was going on he kept singing another song it's time when he jumped up he jumped up and he ran across he jumped up on the first pew ran across the first pew in the middle section jumped off ran over and sat back down I was back there fixing to kick that folding chair over 
I said, I'm too old to run. Right knee's a bum knee. I can't run on it anymore. But if that pastor jumps up and runs again uh, and runs across that pew, about that time he leaped up to his feet, he jumped up about the time his foot hit on that pew, I jumped up. I didn't even know what they were singing. I didn't even know what he was all excited about. I didn't even really know what God was doing in his life. But God was doing something so great in his life. Uh, it got the spilling over into mine. Uh, next thing I know, I shout my lungs out. I was about to stand up in my chair and huh, don't even know what was going on. That's what uh, James and John got in on. Peter just started beckoning. Hey, come over here. You got to get in on some of that. And every time I get a chance this week, I'm going to remind you, come out here in the deep water. Come out here and get in on some of this. Don't miss out on it. The nets are breaking. The boats are sinking. Don't miss the wonders that excel our imagination. God entered his life. God enriched his life. I give you this and I'm finished. God elevated his life. Watch what he tells him in verse number 10. He says at the end of the verse, Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not. From henceforth thou shalt catch fish. Simon Peter got so overwhelmed with the wonder, the work, the power of God that he fell at Jesus' knees and said, depart from me. Jesus is like, no. I ain't walked down here to see a Galilee and get in your boat to depart from you, friend. You ain't seen nothing yet. We just on the beginning side of what we're going to do together. This ain't the end. I didn't just pop in, pour all these blessings out on you and gonna leave, see you later. Thank God. He said, I came to do something with your life. You're not gonna be a fear not. Don't worry about all that sin. I already take care of that. Of course, at Simon Peter's day, Jesus is going to go to the cross. Some of y'all tied up in your past, ain't got away from your past, can't have revival, can't serve God because you done something 37 years ago and you can't get over it. Fear not. Jesus already took care of that. Jesus know how sorry, low down, no account sinner you was when he stepped in your life. He knew, he knew that Simon would cuss and swear and say I never knew him and yet he stepped in and said fear not. He knew that Satan would sift him as wheat but he said fear not. I know you're in a pandemic I know that we're not working like we did. I know that things are running out. I say with the words of the Lord Jesus, fear not. I'm fixing to elevate your life. He said, fear not. Watch this now. He said, from henceforth, starting right now, change everything you know. You shall catch men. You won't talk about somebody can testify about having their life elevated. I'm a Mill Hill boy born on the wrong side of the tracks, born so far in the poor white trash side of town that white trash called us poor white trash. Am I telling the truth? White trash called us poor white trash. Nobody cared if we went to hell. Nobody cared how we lived. Nobody expected any better out of us. Didn't stop Jesus from coming over on the wrong side of the tracks. My mama drugged me to church every time the door opened. I remember hearing them old time preachers. I remember hearing the guys are old now when they were in their heyday, younger in their heyday, looking forward to hearing them, looking forward to being in a meeting where they were preaching, looking forward to getting them to sign my Bible. You know what? I'm preaching with some of those guys now. I'm preaching for some of those guys now. I'm talking about a police. My daddy wasn't a preacher. My daddy wasn't a deacon. My daddy wasn't even a church member. I mean, had nothing. All my daddy ever done was an old time police officer. Didn't have a spiritual bone in his body. But Jesus walked down by the shore one day in the poor white trash side of town and said, that's a no account, low down. He'll probably never be what he should be. He'll never measure up to this one and that one. But I'm going to go down here and enter his life. I'm going to enrich his life 
life. I'm going to pull him out of that. I'm going to elevate his life. You talk about being elevated in this beautiful church building. Getting to preach for this man of God. Getting to preach behind that man of God. I'm talking about a man nobody expected to either. I'd either be a criminal running from the law or I'd be a policeman trying to enforce the law. And that's the best it's going to get. I ain't trying to be arrogant or cocky. But look at what God's done for me. He took an old unlearned fisherman, hot tempered and big mouth, said, I'm going to elevate your life. From this moment on, from henceforth, you shall catch men. When God, uh, son, ascended back to heaven, he promised them, I'll send you another comforter. Sent him on the day of Pentecost. On that day, <laughs> when he got ready to pick a preacher, had 12 apostles, had 11 apostles still alive. Paul wasn't in. I think Paul was the 12th apostle, but he wasn't in yet. He had 11 men he could choose from. But guess who picked? He said, stand up and preach in your old country language, if you will. Because he was an unlearned man. He just knew the street language. Preach in your old country way and I'll make it where everybody can hear it in their language. The Bible said that 3,000 got saved. Can you imagine when they started getting saved? Old Simon Peter must have thought about that day on the Sea of Galilee when Jesus looked at him and said, Fear not, from henceforth you'll catch men. They had another meeting, 5,000 got saved. I mean, they got to get and catching men faster than he caught fish on the Sea of Galilee. Acts chapter number 4, I believe I'm right. Acts 4, Peter and John's going up to the temple in the hour of prayer. And there's a man sitting by the gate beautiful and he's begging for alms. And he reaches out and says, can you help a poor beggar? Can you give me a little handout? Can you give me a little alms? And Peter fastened his eyes on him and said, silver and gold have I none. But I learned something on the Sea of Galilee. And he said, the Bible said that he told him, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. He took him by the hand, said, In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise and walk. Now let me give you Weaver's country explanation of that text. He looked down at him. He said, I, Silver and gold, I ain't got no money. But I learned something one night on the Sea of Galilee. He reached down, got him by the hand, said, If you'll launch out here in the deep and you'll let down your Ned, you'll go leaping and a shouting and a praising God running in the temple. He will enter your life. When Peter walked up, Jesus was entering that man's life. When that man said, give me something, and Simon said, no, I got something a whole lot better than that, God was enriching his life. And Peter pulled him by the hand. He jumped up and went running in the temple. Never walked, never run, never praised God like that before. And here he comes in the temple, a leaping and a shouting and a praising God. God had elevated his life. That's why the Lord is worth all of that. He's worth giving it all. I think I just heard George Beverly Shea singing, I'd rather have Jesus than anything. No wonder Paul the Apostle said, all these accomplishments, I count them but dung. I count them all loss that I might win Christ. No wonder that little boy misquoted Psalm 23, 1 and said, the Lord is my shepherd and that's all I want. So I ask you, have you forsaken all? Deserted it. That word forsake means to turn you back on and never go back to. Deserted it. And started a new day, a new desertion, and a new direction. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.